والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد. Today we are talking about a hadith. I don't think most of Muslims are aware of this hadith, even though it's narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. It's an authentic hadith and it's reported in, in, in the both Sahih books, Bukhari and Muslim. So this hadith is reported by Abi Waqil al Layfi, one of the Sahaba, very famous with his kunya. But we, we don't know his name for sure. We don't know when he was born. We don't know when he was become Muslim. And we don't know when he was dying. So SubhanAllah, this is the funniest thing, that even though he's very famous, we all know Abu Waqid al But the scholars, they said, we don't know his name. Some of them, they said, his name is Al-Harith bin Malik, or Al-Harith bin Awf, or even Awf bin Al-Harith. So they are not really sure. They don't know when exactly he was born, when he became Muslim. Did he witness better or not? There is a lot of opinions on that. And they don't even know when he passed away. Some of them they said 67th of Hijrah. Some of them they said 65, 75, 85. So SubhanAllah. Even though I said he's very famous and he narrated a lot of hadith. And this hadith that we are talking about, that he said that while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or baynama, kan al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yajlis fil masjid, wal nasu ma'ah, il aqbala thalathu nafar, thalathu nafar, fa aqbala thnani ila rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa dhahaba wahid, qala fa waqafa ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فأما أحدهما فرأى فرجة في الحلقة فجلس فيها وأما الآخر فجلس خلفهم وأما الثالث فأدبر فأدبر ذاهبا فلما فرغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ألا أخبركم عن النفر الثلاثة أما أحدهم فآوى إلى الله فآواه الله وأما الآخر فاستحيا فاستحي الله منه وأما الآخر فأعرض فأعرض الله عنه سبحان الله. So he said while the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was sitting with the people approaching them. So there is a three group of people. They came. There is three people came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Two of them. They stand in front of the Prophet ﷺ and one went away. One of them, he found a space in the halaqa, in the circle, that sitting around the Prophet ﷺ, and he sat there. And the other one, he didn't find a space, so he sat behind. And then after the Prophet ﷺ finished his talk, he said, Shall I tell you about these three people? He said, yes. He said, the first one, he betook himself to Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him into his grace and mercy and accommodate him. He found a space. And the other one, he shy from Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover him with his mercy. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet actually sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he used the same word. So Allah would shy from him. That's mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would shy to punish him because he's shying from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فاستحي الله Or if we want to put it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Give him a shelter because he shied from Allah. 
So Allah also include him with the mercy. And the third one, he said, فَأَعْرَضَ فَأَعْرَضَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ He turned his face from Allah. So Allah likewise turned his face from him. If we really think about this hadith, it's sometimes it's an action that we all do. That when there is a halafa, when there is a majlis of dhikr, we don't really give the right value to the majalis of dhikr and majalis of ilm. Even though the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one hadith <coughs> called these majalis, called these sitting, the circles of dhikr, he called it Riyadh al We know Riyadh al right? We know the book Riyadh al Riyadh, it means the gardens. So that's why the Nawawi, when he writes this book, he said, Riyadh al the gardens of pious people. But the Prophet وسلم, he said about the gatherings, when you give the ilm, when you start to mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sharia and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Riyadh al the gardens of heavens on earth and he said when you find when you find these gardens farta'u then feast try to take as much as as you can just like you go and you see a wedding and they offer food and they accommodate everyone. They welcoming anyone to come. When someone do walima, aqiqa, anything, and he invites you, you go and eat, right? You enjoy, and they will be happy that you came to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala welcome you in the majalis of the kir. Not even this. He even yubahi bikum al malaika. He boosting of you among the malaika, among the angels. Admire you that you sitting with the majlis, with, with the sitting that you only desire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seek the knowledge. That's why there is an, another hadith. There is a hadith that one of the Sahaba, one of the Sahaba <coughs> mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to see a halqa of dhikr. One group of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he went to them and he asked them, "Why you are sitting here?" And then they said. We just call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guide us to this religion. So the Prophet said, By Allah, you only sitting for this reason? They said, By Allah, we only sitting for this reason. Nothing. We just praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, I don't ask you to, to swear by the name of Allah because I have a suspicious about you, but the angel Jibreel came to me and he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boosting you among the malaik, admiring that you are doing this action in front of the angels. This is the value of, of the sitting in halqa, listening to ilm listening to the dhikr, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not something easy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention you in front of his angels. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa returning to the hadith about the three people. One of them, 
he came, saw the Prophet sallallahu talking, he really desired to be with them. Wants to attend, to listen, to gain the knowledge, to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He desire, he will be that in the halaqa with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accommodate him, accept him, cover him with his mercy. The second one, he shy. He doesn't want to be there. But he shy to leave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So when he came, he sat behind. Again, when he shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered him with the mercy. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the reward according to his amal, to his action. And the third one, he flee. He saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The scholars, they said most likely he's a munafiq, he's a hypocrite. Because no one see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approaching him. He just leave. But actually, sometimes it, it, it happens like he, he, he doesn't desire the knowledge, he doesn't desire to be with the pious people. <coughs> That's why he said, he turned his face, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise turned his face from him. And imagine that someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want him. Which good can come from this guy? Sometimes with the small actions, if we don't think about it, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe we will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry with us. It doesn't dis it displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Small things. Leaving a halaq of it. Despising a Muslim. Saying a bad thing about brother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like it. That's why when, when you start doing a ma'asiyah, it leads you to another ma'asiyah. You're doing a one sin and then the rest coming. Doing a one ta'a, a one obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it leads you to more. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a barakah, blessings. But if you choose not to do so, and then it will lead you to worse ma'asim. The shaitan then will take the advantage and try to inspire you to do more and more, and fell down. So subhanAllah. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you think it's it's an easy action. This guy, he just saw halaq and he left. He doesn't leave the salat. He doesn't leave something from the obligatory worship. He just saw the Prophet sallallahu talking to people and he flee. So the Prophet sallallahu said, فَأَعْرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left him alone, turned his face on him. In this hadith, Imam al Nawawi conclude a lot of points. He said in this hadith that it's recommended to sit and listen to the scholars. And he said, and it's very recommended to sit in a place that everyone can come, not in, 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 let hide and do that. No, it's like in, in, you show that you are doing it, doing it publicly. And he said, the best place to do this is the masjid. And he said, it's recommended to tell the people and inspire them to do the good. <coughs> And it's recommended to go to the masjid, even if it's not salah, and search for the knowledge. And it said, he said, and it's very bad actions to leave these majalis if there is no reason. 
you went to the masjid, if you attend the halaqa of dhikr, and you just leave without any reason, because you think, oh, whatever comes from this, I already know. I, I don't need this kind of knowledge. Because whatever you listen and you gain from the knowledge, whether you know or you don't know. If you know, it's a good reminder for you. It's remind you of this knowledge. And if you don't know, you will improve yourself. You will gain the knowledge and you can do put it in actions. So it's very recommended to attend the halaqat and you shouldn't leave without a reason. And he said, it's recommended to stay or to sit near the one who speak and listen and try to reflect what he's saying and to be polite with him. And he said, if, if even it's even recommended to sit in the halaq as the Prophet ﷺ used to sit with his companions to do a one circle, just like a one group. And it's always recommended to do the lectures in halaqah, except what the Jumu'ah and the Eid. Because the Prophet وسلم, he taught us to sit just like the angels sitting between the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Sufuf, in a rose. And he said, also, if you find a space in, in the circle, you sit in it. If there is no space, sit behind. And he said, it's also recommended from this hadith that if you see something good to mention it, and if you see something bad to mention it as well. The good to let people <laughs> Be aware of it and bring it in, in actions. And the bad, same thing. To let people be aware of it and they stop doing it. After I, after I hear this hadith the first time, I didn't leave any half of the cup unless I have something to do. If there is a sheikh talking, I didn't leave him unless. I had because I don't really want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be displeased with me if I leave the halaqa of dhikr the halaqa that it mentioned the name of Allah and it praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> and mention the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we gain the knowledge from it it's always a good opportunity to improve yourself. That's why it's very recommended to attend the halaqat of dhikr. If you have something to do, you are allowed to leave. If it's not, it's a makruh to leave the halaq. Actually, you put yourself in a risk that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be displeased with you for this action. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about certain people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hate their actions, he, he hate their present. So he doesn't want them to do actions. They, they can't do the actions. Because with, with their bad intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want them even to be among the, the good people. So always look to your intention. If you come to the halaq and you don't attend the halaq for a reason that you think your level is above these people that are sitting and listening, then you have to be aware of your intention. You have to be aware that there is arrogance 
in your heart. So this is the hadith that I want to talk about this night. Uh, first of all, do you have any questions? No? Okay. Sometimes you find a halakha in a language uh, you are not familiar with. Is it incumbent are you to yes. stay? This is a very good question. No? Okay. You can you, you you can you can leave because you are not you will not get the benefits. The reason that you will get the benefits of it, but still if you stay for the sake of Allah, just to stay there with the pious people that they praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. in order you will find yourself even if you get a one word that you will recognize and you will get to it you will get a for it do you know <coughs> some of the sahaba they said that attending the halaqa of dhikr gaining the knowledge it's better than praying 1000 rakah 1000 rakah because the shaitan it's very easy to him to get someone who worship but very difficult to get someone with the knowledge if you know the knowledge if you if you are aware about your intention you you, you know that the shaitan will come in from this door or this window or from this side and this side and he will try to do this and this to you it will be very difficult to him to trick you right but if you don't know, just worship. So it's better to spend your time with knowledge and then worship than just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even with the tawheed, with la ilaha illallah, what he said, فَعْلَمْ No, gain the knowledge that it's, there is no God except one God. So you have to believe in it. You have to have the knowledge that there is only one God. That's why a lot of brothers, they ask, oh, uh, what about this and this and this? What if they really get the knowledge? They wouldn't ask these questions. Jazakallah. No more questions? So, salam alaykum. The bad news, this will be the last halakha. I'm leaving at the, at the end of this month and this will be very difficult for me to come and do any half and because I'm doing a test I will not be able to do the next week as well so this is, will be the last half but before I will close this series of halaqah what the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu I want to be sure that everyone, everyone aware that or at least he knows the basics of hadith. So I want to ask you some questions. How many kinds of hadith we have? Five. Three, yes. Mutawatr. Yes, mutawatr. Mashur, yes. Ahad. Three. So, uh, Shaykh Uthman, what is Mutawatr? If I remember, uh, Mutawatr, it has something to do with the uh, the chain of knowledge. Which is? It means that... Everything has to, like, something has to do with the chain. With the chain. Okay. Yes. Except for the Hadith Qudsi, which was not... Hadith Qudsi, it's also, we will say it's with the chain, but the, the, the Qudsi, it's, it's a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said this, not my saying. This is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said, but it's not the Qur'an. So the Mutawatir, just speaking about the chain of narrative, um, there is either a missing Link? No, or, or the, the mutawatir is the highest level of hadith. 
that this hadith there is no doubt about it. Tawatar al akhbar that means it comes a lot. That it comes from a lot of chains that there is no possibility, even possibility, that the Prophet doesn't say this hadith. And how come there is no possibility? When you find like a thousand people narrated that the Prophet said this, you can't really put a thousand people all together and they lie the same exact lie on behalf of the Prophet. And we mentioned that there is some hadith that the Prophet said on Mimba in Hajjat al Wada. 10,000 people heard the Prophet saying this. And these 10,000 they narrated to the second generation, second generation, until it comes to us. So thousands of people, they said the Prophet said this word. Which doubt will come to us that the Prophet doesn't say this hadith? So that's me. There is no doubt that the Prophet doesn't say this hadith. This is what the Mutawata means. And then Mashhur and Ahad. Mashur and Ahad both, they have possibility that the Prophet وسلم, doesn't say the hadith because it comes from a chains which is, is not mutawatir, it's not like thousands, not hundreds. If it's a three and more, we would say it's mashur. That it's less possibility that the Prophet وسلم, will say this hadith. It comes from three people, Three hear the Prophet وسلم, same exact words, same hadith, maybe different occasions. So that's we call it mashur. And the other one is ahad. The ahad it comes from one chain or two, maybe, to the Prophet. وسلم, and, <coughs> and this kind of hadith, it can be Sahih, Hassan, and Bai. Sahih, it means authentic. Hassan, it means it's good to take, acceptable. Weak, and Daif, it means weak. And how we say it's Sahih, authentic hadith, that we are sure that the Prophet we can say we are sure that the Prophet said this hadith, but most likely the Prophet said this hadith because we know each person in this chain that he is trustful, uh, truthful, and he had a good memorization, and there is no illa in this hadith, and there is nothing against it. There is no shudud. So if this hadith is straight, there is nothing against it. All the, the people who reported the hadith, they are very well known to us. There is no one that we, we don't know. We call this hadith is authentic. If one of them, we know him very well, he's a good, pious, wouldn't lie ever, but his memorization is a little bit not so good. Now the hadith, the rank of the hadith will be from Sahih to the Hassan. If there is a liar in the chain, we would say this hadith is weak. If there is something against the hadith, sometimes you find there is a some cases which is only with the scholars but I, I, I want you to stick with this that you know the, the Sahih, the Hassan and the Ba'if. So first of all, Mutawatir, there is no doubt about it. And then Mashur and then Ahad and the Ahad could be. See, it can be Mutawatir, it can be Mashur, it can be Sahih, it can be Hassan, it can be Ba'if. It doesn't matter that the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, this is my saying or this is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the only difference between the Hadith Qudsi and the normal Hadith. So the Hadith Qudsi that the Prophet ﷺ referred this Hadith to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, this is not my saying. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, but it's not Quran. So the meaning from Allah, but the words are from the Prophet ﷺ. And the, the, the regular hadith, it's the meaning from the Prophet and the words from the Prophet Any questions about the hadith? Do a quick quiz? No, I'm just kidding. Jazakumullah <laughs> khair.
بارك الله فيكم. Yes, don't don't forget us from the du'a by the way. Zakum Allah khair, barakallahu fiqh.